Hello everybody, this is Solar Tiger and it's Sunday the 26th of April and the time now is coming up to half past six in the evening. It's still very sunny, it has been very sunny all day. So we did some work in the garden and it's been very good weather for solar. The wind turbine has been turning from time to time as the odd gust of wind comes and goes. So anyway, today I have been having a charging session. I'm using the DC battery charger, charging up my batteries. I charged the electric bike battery with the inverter earlier, but today I'm going to talk about system voltages. Now when you set up your DIY system, solar power system, you'll probably be faced with the decision of do I go with a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system. The answer to this depends on whether you will have a, an inverter and if so how much you use your inverter and the loads that you power with your inverter. If you use mostly 12 volt devices that is things that work directly off the 12 volts DC or use a, a an, an adapter such as in-car accessories and things made for the camping market then and you don't either don't have an inverter or you don't use it much then you can use a 12 volt system so that's if you have if you only use DC devices or if you have an inverter but you only use it every now and again and you use it only for lower power devices I have a 12 volt system because I use a lot of 12 volt devices mostly and I have a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter but it's only a 300 watt model Is a 12 volt one but I only use it for very light loads. Uh, I have not e ever exceeded 200 watts with this inverter. This inverter is a 300 watt inverter and at 12 volts that means it draws a current of 30 amps to produce the 300 watts. Now this is fine if you have a small system and you use mostly DC devices if on the other hand you don't use many DC devices but you do use your inverter a lot and you power higher powered devices with it then I would recommend going with a 24 volt system. The reason behind this is that say I had a 24 volt inverter instead of the 12 volt one to produce 300 watts at 24 volts you only need 15 amps that is half the current that you need with a 12 volt inverter and this means that you can use thinner cabling so I can use thinner wire to connect the inverter to the battery and I can use low lower current rated switches and fuses so that's one thing the main of uh, the reason the the, the reason that this is an advantage is because if you run devices that are over a thousand watts, say, you will use a lot less current with the 24 volt system than you would on a 12 volt system. The thing here is that to carry high current you need thick cable and higher current rated switches and circuit breakers or fuses and these are a lot more expensive. So if you use high power, high power consumption, then better to go with a higher system voltage. So if you use high powered devices, then go with the 24 volt system. If you need to use 12 volt devices on your 24 volt system, you can buy voltage reducers. These are made for the truck market to run things like 12 volt fans and CB radios in trucks 
that have a 24 volt system so you can buy voltage reducers in various current ratings so although if you use a lot of DC devices then go with the 12 volt system if you use your inverter a lot and power higher powered devices and go with a 24 volt system you can get systems that use higher voltages than this but 12 volt and 24 volt systems are more common with DIY systems like we have so that's that so lower voltages require bigger current to produce the same power as a higher voltage system would with a lower current so that's how that works so if I come to my panel I will explain something here that right, this is the wind power system and this is a 12 volt system that is the wind turbine produces up to say 14 volts and it goes through this PWM controller but basically when the batteries need a charge it just connects the wind turbine directly to the battery when the battery charges up it diverts the generated power into a internal dump load so that's how that works the solar on the other hand is an MPPT system i.e. on the solar panel side it operates on a voltage that is much higher than the battery bank voltage so if I take you to the meter, you'll see you'll see at the moment that the solar panels are pumping out 42.3 volts at just over a half an amp. So we're bringing in 22 watts. But you'll see that the 42 volts is much higher than the battery bank voltage. So the advantage of this is that I can use thinner cable to connect the solar panels to the charge controller. With, that, with less current flowing down the cable, there are less losses in the cable due to resistance. If I used, if I used a PWM controller, then the solar panels would have to operate at a voltage much closer to the battery bank voltage, which means there will be lower voltage across the cable but a higher current in the cable and the losses in the cable are worked out by the formula I squared times R which is the resistance of the cable per unit length so you'll see that as the current increases the losses increase much quicker so that's why I have an MPPT system and at the solar panel side of the system operates at a high voltage. So high voltage means that for a given power I will have less current flowing down the cable. When you get to the solar charge controller then the charge controller down converts the voltage from 40 odd volts down to say 13 to 14 volts to charge the battery but in doing that, it does the opposite to the current. The current increases and, and the, the, the voltage and the current are in a fixed proportion, fixed ratio, to produce the same wattage. I, if the volts goes up, the current goes down. And if the, if the voltage goes down, the current goes up. So that means I only need a thick cable from the charge controller to the batteries which is much shorter than the distance from the charge controller to the solar panels. So if the solar panels are a great distance from the charge controller, then using a higher voltage on the solar panel side means you'll have less losses in the cable between the panels and the charge controller. And also, thinner cable costs less money per unit length than a thicker cable. So that's a cost saving as well. So, if you need to use high powers within your system then it's best to use a high voltage because you can use a lower current 
and then use thinner wire to connect your components together. And thinner cable is much cheaper than thicker cable. It's also easier to handle, it's not so stiff, and it's not as heavy as well. So these are all advantages to using a higher voltage. In commercial systems, much higher voltages are used, which means the current can be a lot less and thinner cables can be used. But DIY people mostly use 12 or 24 volt systems. So bear in mind that if you use 24 volt system, you need to wire two batteries in series to produce the voltage. So you, in a 24 volt system, you will always have an even number of batteries. So I have three batteries here, so I could not go to a 24 volt system without having to buy an extra battery or remove one battery from my existing system. Also, because I have several components that work at 12 volts, i.e. my inverter, I cannot go to a 24 volt system without purchasing another inverter. Now also you may ask, I have a lot of power adapters and you say that using those on an inverter is less efficient but on the other hand every device I have or buy comes with an AC power adapter. So since I have a perfectly good AC adapter supplied with my equipment I might as well just use the inverter rather than have to go out and purchase special DC adapters or DC cords which will cost me more money. So I simply use these with the inverter and that's how that goes. After all at the moment I have plenty of power available and most of the time I am just topping off the batteries so no problem with efficiency in using AC adapters through an inverter. It just saves me money and hassle of buying different leads and adapters to run all my DC devices. So that's that. So this is Solar Tiger saying thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye. Thank you.